So when you uh, are in need of creating your own custom vehicles, then uh, you'll first start by collecting information uh, about all kinds of dimension that you will need to uh, create the vehicles in the software. Um, information that you would typically need will be information about the wheelbase. So that's the distance between the front axle and the uh, rear axle group. Then we have some information uh, you would need for the front overhang, which is the uh, dimension between the uh, front wheel and the uh, uh, front body of the vehicle. Um, then we have the overall length that you can enter. Then we have, of course, the width of the vehicle, which all uh, define uh, yeah, the main uh, or the most important uh, dimension uh, to create your vehicles. Then we have uh, information that you can use for the vertical profile. So if you were doing any um, vertical uh, simulations, you need to check ground clearances or uh, overhead obstacles, then you can also uh, enter those dimensions in uh, the order to the vehicle. For that you will go to this part of the vehicle, which is the roof line uh, data view. So the height information can be filled also in these uh, uh, fields on the vehicles tab. Information about ground clearances uh, can be entered quite accurately, so at the front, uh, at the wheelbase and at the rear of this vehicle, and you can even, even um, uh, refine that by uh, entering dimensions to uh, make sure your uh, angle of approach and departure are accurate. Then we have uh, information that, uh, about tires and axles. So like I mentioned, we have a front axle group and a rear axle group. Uh, each axle group can be given uh, a, a yeah, different number of axles uh, and also wheels. Uh, combined with uh, track information, uh, you will be um, modeling your vehicle accurately. Now as for the uh, track, I'd like to make a little note here. Usually when you're provided with um, information from uh, a vehicle manufacturer or you just uh, look at the details of uh, the slide that you now see on screen, um, in the top right section where you look at the front track and the rear track, you'll see that uh, the dimension is given from the center of each wheel uh, to the left and right. Now what we require in order turn is actually uh, a little bit different. So we have a front track which is uh, measured from the outside of the wheels and um, basically means that uh, when you compare this to manufacturer data, you'll just need to add the width uh, of uh, half a wheel on each side or just one wheel to that uh, front track actually. Uh, then uh, the most important thing that you need to add for a vehicle um, and, and give this uh, vehicle realistic uh, turning characteristics is the steering lock angle. So the steering lock angle is uh, given into uh, this field and beside this uh, field you'll see this little icon here which is our steering lock calculator. Um, manufacturer data um, sometimes gives this uh, steering lock angle, as you see there, in the 31.8 degrees. But more uh, often you will uh, find uh, manufacturer data that only gives you an actual turning radius value. Now when you fill in that radius value in this field here and just click apply, then the steering lock angle is automatically calculated by auto turn based on all the parameters that you've uh, entered earlier uh, and this will result in a certain steering lock angle. Now once you hit apply, that value will be uh, copied and applied to this field here uh, so that your 
um, uh, vehicle will absolutely be performing according to the correct specifications. Um, another possibility uh, to uh, refine your vehicle or to make the steering behavior of your vehicle as realistically as possible is to uh, set up rear steerable axles. Now these vehicles uh, when you need to rebuild those then you have uh, some uh, extra tools in order to turn available. Uh, first thing you would do is uh, change the steering type to front and rear steering and you will need to identify which axles uh, will remain fixed. So just a little too quick there. Um, when you look at the fixed start uh, value and uh, number value, uh, those values can be changed to influence uh, the rear steering behavior um, by fixing uh, the, the correct axle. Now if you want to uh, add a profile then um, you can create a vertical profile and you can create a realistic plan view. So the realistic plan view is actually uh, just CAD data um, so you will be able to draw your own realistic um, top view of your vehicle. You can also do this for the profile view. Um, for the profile you can add some additional uh, tags which will result in the display of proper uh, dimensions of length body front overhang and wheelbase. But these drawings need to be saved at specific locations. Now there's a little difference between uh, how it was in 10, version 10.1 and earlier. And as you can see on screen, uh, the drawings needed to be saved in the user's public folder. And there, under that you'll have your Transform Solutions, Auditor 10, uh, Vehicles Users or Profile Users and into the library name that you would uh, save this vehicle under. Now this is uh, somewhat detailed information that can be uh, uh, found also in the help file of Auditurn. Uh, so if you want to learn more about creating your uh, uh, profiles or realistic plan views, please uh, check it there. Then we have also um, the way how vehicle parts are uh, connected. So the example I showed you was just, uh, was just about a, a single unit uh, vehicle. Now let's say you have uh, a two part or even more uh, part connected to your vehicle then those need to be connected through uh, certain connector types. So the first one we have here is the hitch. Um, which is actually a, a towing bar with the, the next vehicle uh, part, uh, the trailer connected to it. So you have a rigid component and then the uh, trailer itself. The next part is uh, the full uh, part. Now the full uh, connector connects the truck to sort of a steerable uh, axle in the trailer which introduces a, a, another rotation point um, and the bar, uh, yeah, although it's considered part of the trailer. But it sort of uh, behaves as a separate component. And then we have the uh, semi, so this is uh, the third type of connector and corresponds to the fifth uh, wheel, in which case uh, this is uh, one uh, mounted on top of the towing vehicle. Then um, we have uh, the pin ahead um, and pin behind. Uh, connectors those determine the position of the connector uh, which is in relation to uh, the axle group. Now in the first example we have a semi-trailer with a pin uh, ahead which means that the connector is located ahead of the truck's rear axle group. If you need to uh, or if you need the connector to be centered then 
you can choose uh, whichever uh, type you want between pin ahead or pin behind. Just make sure that the distance uh, from the rear axle group is uh, zero. Um, and the pin behind shows the connector um, yeah, located one, uh, yeah, just 30 centimeters behind the rear axle group. Now, if you look at this slide, um, now we have uh, some more uh, details here, as you can see. Um, we have this um, a two part vehicle that you have still. You are copying uh, all the dimensions or all the dimensions that you need to fill in uh, for uh, the first uh, vehicle part, which uh, have your front uh, overhang. Then we have uh, uh, a cap length again. I'm just uh, going through these uh, quickly. And here, where your connector position will be uh, is located here at the, the black arrow. So after the wheelbase, which goes to the center of the rear axle group, so in the middle of the two rear axles. Uh, and from that position, the connector position is uh, determined. And on the trailer side, again we have the front overhang, uh, the, the overall length, and also the wheelbase. Now the wheelbase for a trailer in this uh, case, just going back, uh, goes from the connector at the front also to the center of the wheelbase at the rear of this uh, trailer. Now for multi-part angles we can um, we need to add a little more information. So, um, and um, yeah this is uh, really important to define the um, articulating behavior of the vehicle. So you need to set a, an articulating angle and articulating uh, limits. Now vehicles that uh, support front and rear steering, for example uh, special transport vehicles, it's also necessary to determine additional steering linkages. Now, steering linkages um, uh, can be um, seen as the, the behavior between the rear steering axles and how the front part of the vehicle is steering. So um, the front part uh, has uh, yeah, goes into a turn with a certain uh, a steering lock angle and based on that the rear steering angles will uh, uh, are actually sort of programmed to behave a certain way so that it uh, gives you uh, yeah, the best uh, vehicle simulation uh, yeah, you can get. Then we can uh, add loads to our vehicles. I have uh, two uh, examples here on screen. So uh, you can think about agricultural uh, vehicles that have uh, uh, machinery uh, added at the front or at the rear of the uh, tractor or you can think of it as for example a snow plowing vehicle and um, yeah that's an example that I want to start with just uh, let me quickly switch to my uh, AutoCAD window for a moment quickly pausing the screen here Okay, so what I have here is a um, little drawing with some um, outlines drawn. Now these outlines um, 
are the ones that I will use in a moment. Just let me open my uh, vehicles window first. And uh, what you see here is a, um, a vehicle that I want to use to start my um, a new vehicle with. So the way to do that is either by uh, copying an existing vehicle or creating a vehicle uh, completely new. Um, and let's uh, copy this vehicle and what happens then is that all parameters and all information from this vehicle um, is being copied uh, to continue uh, with. I need to give my uh, vehicle a name so I'll change this name to uh, my snowplow. And once I have that information, I can make adjustments to the width of this vehicle, to the length, all the fields that uh, I just uh, mentioned. Uh, but in this case, I do not want to uh, change anything here. The only thing that I want to do is um, change the uh, axle configuration. So if I want to add another axle, uh, I want to and I want to do that for the rear axle group, I just go to this part of the window, change my axles to either 3 or uh, 2 if I want. Uh, and if I were to change it to 3 and do the same thing that I've uh, shown you in on the slides, then I can change my uh, steering type to front and rear. And here you see those uh, elements popping up to uh, set the uh, start uh, positions of my uh, my axles. Now with this configuration and I click here on uh, the two and third axle and check with my articulate function which axles are steering then you see that um, I've um, set up the behavior so that only my first axle is uh, is turning. Um, yeah, then the next thing I want to do, uh, just is here, so I want to uh, add a load now to my vehicle, but just before I do that, I need to um, Like so, so now I've made them all steerable. Let's uh, do it like this. Should all be steerable. And now it is. Okay. So I'm just Closing this vehicle and the first thing I need to do or what helps me a lot to do would be to place uh, a vehicle in my drawing. So I'll just uh, align it like this, just make sure that I align it nicely to uh, the little profile I already have in my drawing. So I'll just hit apply and I can uh, quickly move my vehicle Let's turn my snaps on quickly from the center to this middle point right here. And I have this side component that I also want to uh, position a bit better, so let's do that as well. And add it to roughly this place. Okay, then I'm going back to my vehicles window and um, let me go quickly into the vehicle details. Now this is where I have this icon here in the bottom left to define my load. And the way to do that is simply by uh, 
importing the load. And this is the first one that I want to select. After selecting it, I can uh, choose a reference point, which is here in the middle. Um, and immediately this part will be added to my vehicle. I'm going to do that for the second part as well, or the second uh, component as well. Select the reference point here at the mid front. And there it is. So the elements that I can choose are just uh, a simple closed polylines or um, a complex change. And when I've added those, I can uh, close. Now, if I'm creating a 3D load, for example, uh, for a, a 3D vehicle, then I can also choose if this uh, is uh, 2D and 3D. I will need to enter some uh, height information there. Uh, so it will show up in the 3D view. So after adding the loads, uh, I'm pretty much done. There's one other thing I would like to change here, which is this profile view. Right? Now, as you can see, uh, I have something set up here, which uh, not exactly matches uh, what I'm trying to represent. So I'm changing my uh, rear axles uh, group. I'm going to change this to uh, two axles to make it more fitting. And in here, in the left, I can choose from all the vehicle profiles that are already uh, provided with AutoTurn. Now, one of them is our snowplow vehicle. So, basically, you can choose just uh, uh, any profile which is available and as I mentioned you can also create your own profile to make sure that it perfectly matches the vehicle that you uh, need for your uh, project. Now with an OK I'm going to close uh, this window and I'm going to uh, see how this vehicle performs in our project drawing. So I have this little roundabout here and I'm going to um, check my display properties. So when you are working with load, just make sure that the load component is turned on. You can find this in your uh, vehicles category of the properties window. Over here you can turn on your load, you can uh, give it a preferred color and even if you want to display it as a filled shape, you can also just make sure that this uh, switch is on. Uh, then for the envelopes, um, you have all the options available f for front and rear tires um, and even more, I'm choosing uh, the vehicle body and the loads to uh, display my load simulation on top of my uh, vehicle simulation. So starting here with the 2D art path, um, I can uh, select some geometry to align my vehicle to. So let's start here, put this window up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just turning my snaps off here. And then within my drawing you can uh, see not only the vehicle but also the loads attached to it. So the vehicle body in blue and in purple you will see the uh, envelope that is taken up by uh, the load components. Now let's uh, quickly review the other uh, elements here. So another way to um, show you better how we deal with loads is uh, another test vehicle that I've created. So this is my uh, second vehicle with a, a low bed uh, trailer behind that. Um, I can uh, just start with a, a copy of this vehicle again. And I'm calling this uh, my um, 
transport. So again, all the dimensions are just uh, fine the way they are. Um, there it is. Placing this uh, vehicle in my uh, drawing. Also with this 180 degrees. Just cancelling this uh, simulation. And now what I want to uh, do is just uh, copy this object right here. And uh, position it how it would uh, be fitting on top of this uh, uh, low bed trailer. <coughs> now once it's on there um, and I've uh, positioned it uh, correctly, I'm going to my vehicles window again and then the vehicle details I just need to add this uh, load again uh, but now since I have two vehicle parts, I also need to make sure that this load will go to the correct vehicle part by using these uh, navigational arrows. You can see that the red arrow is now uh, above the second vehicle part and also says so here, part two of two. Then I will import the load again and as a reference point use the uh, midpoint of the front of this trailer which is here so that it's uh, then referenced properly. You can see the reference point indicated here. The uh, shape is now added to the second vehicle part. And I can click on OK to confirm. So I'm going to click on OK to make this my current uh, simulation vehicle. Now let's uh, move to our road uh, uh, roundabout again. So I'm placing the vehicle right here, uh, just aligning it like so. And just going into uh, this roundabout. So now beside just the vehicle, um, the, the tractor and the trailer, you can now also keep an, an extra eye on what the impact or effect is of a load added to your uh, uh, trailer or loaded onto your trailer. and the right click ends the simulation. So here you have it and the load, also the, the contours of the load on top of your vehicle as a, a part of the simulation itself. So those were the two um, vehicle examples and simulation that I wanted to show you how uh, easy it is to add a load to uh, your own uh, vehicle or maybe even to uh, an existing vehicle. Let me quickly um, jump back to my uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, so um, the, all kinds of vehicle uh, types are possible to create. Now if uh, you would um, ever have a need to uh, create those vehicles but maybe not have the uh, time to um, learn more, get a little bit more into it or you might uh, miss some uh, information about these vehicles. Then we have our uh, project support services to do vehicle creation for you. Now this is a, a creation service that is uh, offered by our team of engineers at the Transop Solutions to help you model the vehicles. Um, which uh, yeah, are not provided in Autoturn's uh, standard vehicle libraries. Now, for example, you might want to model a specific uh, vehicle from a manufacturer or a theoretical design vehicle from a road design guideline for your project. And then uh, our service uh, can create the vehicle for you, uh, so you would only need to perform the uh, subpath analysis. Um, 
Now on screen you see some uh, simple examples of uh, requests that we do for our clients varying from a, a transporter bus or a fire trucks. We have some special uh, buses. Uh, construction vehicles like the crane you see there, uh, but um, a topic which is very current is the wind energy um, category of vehicles that we uh, can create and uh, support. Now if you are interested in uh, using our service, then uh, simply contact our engineers and uh, yeah, once you provide them uh, yeah, all required vehicle information, so what I've mentioned to you, uh, vehicle dimensions, steering characteristics, uh, maybe even profile drawings, and then uh, based on that information we can uh, send you uh, a quote and also uh, an expected delivery time. Now if you have such a request, feel free to uh, send them to us to the uh, email address that you see on screen, which is bss at transoftsolutions.com, and um, we will reach out to you. Go to our last slide here, which uh, leads me to uh, thank you for being present at uh, today's session, and uh, I hope to see you at one of our next webinars. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.